We do want SCV repairing. Before we went to our last break, we asked you guys what you felt was the strongest race in Heart of the Swarm, A, B, C, or D. Everybody <laughs> voted D, which is, uh, which is the G race, which you guys might remember from NASL Season 1 finals. So uh, G... <laughs> Still the strongest race. I'm, still, I'm pretty good with ZVG. <laughs> <laughs> Undefeated. <laughs> but let's keep talking hard of the Swarm. Blizzard has been patching the game diligently, and they've been spending a lot of attention on the Hellbat itself. We were just kind of talking about it. Uh, nerfing Hellbat drops, making it so you can only carry two uh, uh, transformed Hellbats in a medevac at a time, and also changing the Hellbat to require uh, research at the tech lab on the factory. Now, that research means you can transform Hellbats into Hellions or Hellions into Hellbats. You can still build a Hellbat as long as you have an armory, which is kind of interesting. Uh, if you have an armory and a reactor on that factory, you can build two Hellbats at a time. Uh, what do you guys think about this change? Does it have any implications? Is it something that's going to fix early game? Uh, Zerg versus Terran, or is it something that's not really going to matter much? Uh, there is a little bit of implication. Like, uh, sometimes you, you like to run around with your Hellions and then transform the Hellbats right outside the base, have the Medivacs pick it up, um, and then kind of drop into the base. But other than that, you still can do it. I think Andre was talking about it uh, to me earlier offset, saying that delays timings. I mean, Andre, what, what was exactly No, it's, it's a substantial nerf to that early game, I think. Um, the, the fact of the matter is you don't have that ability to blow down 2,000, 2,000 rocks anymore <laughs> with three armor. And that's going to hinder a lot of maps. It's going to make the rocks actually a lot more important. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, no, but seriously, like the power of that eight-minute Hellbat rush with, with like nine Hellbats is, it was way too strong, I thought. Uh, their, their tanking capacity, everything. But I still feel like there is that one build that's still so difficult to deal with, and it's the Reaper build. Yeah. And it's because the Reapers shut down a lot of scouting. They shut down the ability to take a third super fast, so it really relegates you. Your limitations on builds are, are severely hampered. And from there, I can be going more Reapers behind that and just be doing like a huge all-in, maybe an SCV Reaper all-in. <laughs> Homage to uh, bit the by bit. <laughs> oh, I thought you were talking about Fuser. <laughs> <laughs> or, or I could do something like triple command center. There's, there's a lot of range yeah. that you can't really adjust for if you're playing. Well, that actually lets us move on into a little bit of talk just about Heart of the Swarm in general and, and where it is right now because I have been so frustrated in my latter sessions, particularly playing <laughs> Zerg versus Terran. But you are always frustrated. I, I know. Ben is one of those people who gets really mad when he wins as well. <laughs> 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 you have that in common uh, with Idra, actually, <laughs> really. Because like you, when you win, you get bad. Uh, you get mad about how bad he was. <laughs> you even have to play him. And if you lose, you also get mad because you just get mad. So you always get frustrated. Yeah, with that. But the thing about Zerg versus Terran and the Reaper build in specific that Andre is talking about is Terran can open Reapers, and they're going to get all this map control. You can't really do much about it, and you have no idea what they're doing behind it. It's like. They could be all inning you. Yeah, there's no consistent way. They could for also Zerg be building three command centers to be to be like even or ahead or behind. You you will never know because if I make mass circling just shove that them out into the middle map. Yeah, the reapers might back up, but I could have only been going one rax reaper. I might also run into, into a widow hellions. mine. Or you some could. battle hellions. Absolutely. And so it's just this, it's the blindness. And it Kevin is like, oh, the horror, because he's been playing <laughs> PvZ for two years. I'm glad you know me. <laughs> I don't even have to say it. <laughs> it's like, what? I actually have to play StarCraft without map control, really? Man? Well, it's just, I this mean, it's, it's, a, it's a mechanic that's completely foreign to what Zerg play has been ever since the game came out. Uh, I mean, Zerg has always been designed as the reactive race, and how can you react to something if you can't scout it? Yeah, and... I think like a lot of the non-gas openings don't really work out that well. I've been trying it a lot. Yes, uh, I can fend off against the Reapers, but I'm always scared of, well, at the time it was a lot of help at all ends, but yeah. I'm still scared of uh, not taking my third at a good time because when you delay the third for so long, you can't get your creep spread for so long because the Reapers can just come in, kill all the creep tumors, and then they're out of there. They can regen. Uh, it makes it very difficult for you to do uh, some sort of two-base timing off of no gas for the yeah, first it five is, minutes. It is pretty frustrating. Terran feels so incredibly safe, um, like all the time. Yeah. How is how's the PVT matchup? Terrible. Why? Uh, I think the speed boost is way too powerful because it, it forces you to make a lot more stalkers than you want to in the early game stage, mm -hmm. which takes away a lot of double forge builds. 
Uh, not saying that Double Forge builds are obsolete, but a lot of Double Forge builds are completely gone, uh, particularly <coughs> the Colossus Double Forge build, because it's just way too much gas. You cannot defend with three Stalkers and, you know, a couple Zealots anymore. Uh, you need at least, like, five or six Stalkers. Uh, on top of that, Widow Mines, they're being underused right now. Uh, I, yeah, I see yeah. one day where, you know, it's Bio, Ghost, Viking, and then Carpet Bomb with <laughs> Widow Mines. Well, it's tough to kind of break the bad habit. Well, I don't want to say bad habits, but the habits of Wings of Liberty as a Terran player to play against Protoss, you're going Bio. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. how to incorporate the mech into that. And I know with well, the Widow Mine change and how it does damage to shields and stuff. It's trying just to Widow it. Mines, though. That's really easy. Yeah. The factory goes yeah. down as a reactor, and you just pop them into medevacs. Now, you guys might not know this, but Widow Mines, because they don't have an attack, they have no priority. That means if a Marine or a Marauder is in the range. Is attack moving. Exactly. The, the opponent's units will target those Marines and Marauders first. So if you Carpet Bomb, which is basically taking your, your Medivac, speed boosting on top of your opponent's army, and then drop the Widow Mines, if a Marine or Marauder is in range, they will not target the Widow Mine. Even if they do target the Widow Mine, it still takes a lot, right? Like, if you use your Colossus Fire to do it, uh, it's if still... Yeah, if you're carpet bombing 20 Widow Mines, you literally cannot yes. focus fire all up before they burrow. It's a beautiful sight. So yes, I've yes. I've <laughs> gone into a game. Uh, it was like a, a an hour and 20-minute game where I was against... I had Mass Tempest, Colossus against just straight-up mech, all right? Thors, Siege Tanks, and more importantly, Battle Hellions. Battle Hellions were able to tank so much, they were still able to keep up with all my Tempests, and they would just carpet bomb every single one of my Tempests. I didn't think that was a killable army until that game. I was like, wow, this is so silly, because he's using like 20 Widow Mines, they still stay alive. They don't cost gas? 75, 25. Okay. So I, I think that, note, that is why, Widow mines. that's one of the <laughs> most broken things in the game right now for Terran. I have solutions though, Ben. I have solutions. You nerf it, the massive damage, and you fix the AOE. So the, the AOE damage can only deal a, like a certain amount, maybe cap it. Yeah, 100 damage. And that way, it'll only kill at most like four Zerklings, something like that. I, 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 I'm all for that change. I don't know. <laughs> it's really hard for me to say right now, because personally, I haven't played a lot of high-level PVTs yet, so I kind of don't want to sp uh, speak about it too much. And I believe that what most of you say is accurate. But I have seen a lot of good Protoss players playing. For instance, I saw uh, Grubby play against Beastie on Cloud Kingdom, and I really loved how Grubby just did everything, how he used the new Protoss unit. And I really feel that Storm is always a key in keeping your Tempest yeah. alive. And he did that so extremely well. And Widow Mines really didn't look that threatening in that game. Or just the other night when I watched MMA uh, against Rune. Uh, yeah. Yes. Too. On uh, Echelon Waste, like uh, MMA used a lot of Widow Mines and it was a really good game but at the end of the day the pros play still won because he just played better. I really don't I mean, I don't really want to say that I do not think that it's like unbalanced or imbalanced because, as I said, I haven't played a lot myself, so all I can speak about right now is what I've seen. But I really like what I see, guys. I'm really enjoying watching the matchup. Yeah, it's a lot I of think fun. it's yeah. super fun, and Definitely. I'm really excited. And no, uh, don't get me wrong. I think the mechanics are great. Uh, the, some of the speed boost things, I know we talked about it around right. damn, where the speed boost actually encourages Protoss to be a lot more... Um, no, it makes the game better. As, like, as much as I prepared. would love to still have two cannons and a high Templar and be safe against drops for the rest of the game, that's just not exciting for a late game stalker too. Now those good Terran players will always be able to drop late game scenarios because it's very hard to cover everything, certainly against speed boost uh, Medivac. Speed boost I am drops. super, super happy yeah. with the speed boost upgrade in uh, <coughs> stalker 2. They might want to adjust it later on if it's proven to really just be too good how it is right now, mm -hmm. but never remove Man. it because I really think it encourages high level play I think and rewards the faster players. I would love that speed boost upgrade to be in the command center. I think it has to cost energy. I think it has to cost energy. That way there's yeah. some cost associated that with that would be it. good. Yeah, mm, uh, I agree. I could see that actually. Um, that could work as well. For like, because the few yeah. ZVTs I've played where I've gotten into like a decent position, I feel like two medevacs. I can literally never catch them at, at, at a certain phase of the game. So I have to chase these medevacs around and keep my expansion safe rather than pushing my advantage and like attacking or something. So that's uh, a really frustrating thing. I'm pretty sure a lot too. of Zergs will miss it even if Fungal was instant. I mean, that's how fast they are. It's yeah, ridiculous. Yeah, it's so, so super fast. It's almost impossible to Fungal like while it's boosting. Yeah. How much energy would you think it's good? If I would say 25%. 25. It has to be a 25 increase. Yes. Would you make it part of the Caduceus no, upgrade? No. It's either a well, cost. Well, if you make it cost energy, suddenly that upgrade's worth something. As well. Yeah. 
versus never it's ever ever possible. Yeah. So, <laughs> I don't um, know. I think 25 is quite a lot. Maybe then perhaps you rather want to uh, fix either the duration or the cooldown. Because I really don't. Because I think it's cool that like Metafax that have healed the bio squad for quite a while, which has been dropping. Like five billies have been doing a lot of damage, and they've been stimmed so many times that the Metafax runs out of energy. I think it's damn cool if the, if the Metafax picks up those Marines and still manages to get out of there. It's damn cool when you're when you're watching it. It sucks when you're playing <laughs> yeah. against it. It's like this Metafax needs a medal of honor and like. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I'm I'm super happy with that, and yeah, it looks very strong, and I think Blizzard might address it one day, might change it. But I'm super. I'm so happy with. I think that they're going to wait for gameplay to yeah. progress. Yeah. To yeah. That. Certainly, we need to see yeah, some serious yeah. high-level play. Uh, I, I think yeah. they're going to wait until yeah. like it's actually a big issue, and then they'll address it. Uh, we could take a second to talk about mirrors, but I think we all agree we're that we're the game just PVZ. needs to be fle fleshed out. Yeah. Sure, we, we didn't address PVZ though at all. Um. I watched, the I watched the great PvZ. I don't, last I don't want to think about PvZ after my games against White Rock. Like I don't even <laughs> want to. I watched a really cool. It's just PvZ a painful memory. Night. It was uh, between Gix, one of the guys who lives in the Razor Isles. He's a really, really good North American Zerk, and you guys are going to hear a lot about him uh, in Heart of the Swarm. I'm sure of that. He played against his Protoss on uh, it was actually Daybreak, and the game was really crazy. Like it had everything. Like it had uh, Broodlord, Stampers, uh, Carrier. And then like suddenly like lots of stalkers and zealots because I kind of went back to basics again. And then like Gix is like, I don't understand how I lost the game. I was like, Gix, just make a lot of roaches. <laughs> then he <laughs> remaxed on the roaches and crushed the PVZ is still the same. <laughs> <laughs> Tried and true. All right, so all that new stuff, PVZ unchanged. The final little bit of Heart of the Swarm news that we have for you guys is the map pool for the first season of the Heart of the Swarm ladder has been announced. And uh, we've, uh, we've got a first look at a couple of these maps. We've got a graphic for you. Or that there's a graphic of what the maps will be, and uh, here's a look at some of the maps themselves. The why, the majority why, 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 the majority of the maps are GSL maps, but the, the one Daybreak question that remains is why won't Daybreak <laughs> die? How much longer do we have to play like on this Python, travesty yeah. of a map? The it's sun just, will never set on Daybreak. Uh, hey, we've had some of the best PVZs on that map. We've had <laughs> <laughs> we've had the same best PVZ on that map about ten thousand times. The first few times he was really excited. Though. It was great. Oh my God, Protoss yeah. can take a third base. Like we are seeing macro games. This is awesome. And, and by the end of Wings of Liberty, you can start a Protoss God. versus Zerg PVZ and yeah. just put on a yeah. blindfold. And he's taking his third now, and now he's making the hive. And here comes the Broodlord timing push. And, and Zerg holds. So Zerg wins. Hey, GG. Oh, oh, is good on this Brood Lord Immortal is no. pretty good. Wait, so I guess Immortal, you're not going to like good. my GSO <laughs> recap. <That's a> <laughs> <laughs> I do want to say that uh, that Terran vs. Zerg is actually still very exciting on Daybreak, though. Like, regardless of what PVC is. No, and Daybreak, you guys will see why. Daybreak needs later. to die a painful, horrible death. <laughs> yes. Like, somebody needs to just... You know, Daybreak needs to fall in the incineration zone. <laughs> 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 Best joke ever. You know, I do have to say, though, um, the maps are going to be all up in the air because we have a completely different game. So, yeah. Um, well, mapping know, is before change, the show, yeah. Rotterdam, you were talking about how Tempest changed Daybreak quite substantially. Yeah, but I'm just sick of Daybreak, man. <laughs> and if I have to cast another ZVZ on Daybreak, I might just like skip my throat. <laughs> <laughs> I really can't do it anymore. <laughs> but I really feel like, uh, you know, even Reapers changed the, the landscape of the game. Uh. Yeah. Substantially, I mean. And here I was a couple of weeks ago saying Reapers were bad. <laughs> Maybe if they make Daybreak oh. orange, I would enjoy it again. I'm just really sick of looking at Daybreak. <laughs> yeah. Just give it a nice color. So make some rainbows. <laughs> rainbows on Daybreak. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you want rainbows on Daybreak? Rainbows and unicorns man. make yeah. life happy. <laughs> what is the robot unicorn song? How does it go? Always. <laughs> <I wanna laughs> to be with you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're done with Heart of the Swarm news, guys. We're going to take a very short break. When we get back, we're going to be talking about tournament results. There have been a lot of them, uh, so uh, stick around. We'll be right back. We are John and Jenna Bain of Axiom Esports, and you are watching The Pulse.